Hello, my name is Lasse K. Peterson. I made a product about incremental innovation within the electronic industry as a case study in Apple's iPod, which has sold over 100 million units at this point. The research questions for the case is, how were the iPod invented and which innovation theories and models can be used to describe the process? How was the development process executed and monitored? Can other companies draw experience and prove the innovation based upon the methods used to create the iPod? Research design. This study is mainly based upon disk research and mostly on quality data, such as interviews and articles about the innovation of the iPod. The paradigm approach is mainly critical realism, since it's based upon common facts and not. Apple was founded in 1976, main product area, personal computers. 2000 Apple bought a company which they had to develop a platform which was called iTunes, which could play back M3 files, where the customers could buy M3 files, and which could transfer M3 files to M3 players. But it was not quite good at it, so therefore they decided to invent their own M3 player. Which had to improve the following features, its capability, usability, speed, and quality in order to be competitive within the market. So, therefore Apple had to find some solutions to these four main areas, which was a small design, increased memory stores, optimized operation system, and faster transfer. Generally, the units on the market were quite slow, as mentioned before. Therefore, they had to improve it had to make a sustainable design which could actually attract customers from other platforms such as Walkmans. The design solutions became a small white box at the size of packs of cars, a memory storage disk which was 1.8 inches, an operation wheel which enabled the customer to scroll quickly through all the different songs, and a firewire connection. Apple changed the business model with this product. They used external technology, such as Tony Fidel, which designed the iPod. They used external sourcing, such as from Tobisha with the hard disk. And they also used an external assembly supplier in China. Benefits from changing the business model. They minimized the product investment. They benefit from other skills and they used the subsystem as a platform to develop and optimize this new product which they had invented. So, all in all, they saved a lot of money using and shifting the A model that can be used to describe the creation of the iPod is the state gate process model, from which you have the idea which you make a screen about, which enables you to move on to stage one, and so on, you pass through a lot of gates and stages, which allows you to monitor the whole process and be able to kill projects in time if needed, but also to achieve the best design and create a detailed business plan and thereby to receive a great result and make profit from it. At some of the gauges, actually Apple CEO Steve Jobs were monitoring the whole process and he actually approved the design which was chosen. Another method that can be used to describe this is the open innovation method. Apple used external technology such as Tony Fidel, which was assigned to the whole project as a contractor, who had been working for Philips in order to create an MP3 device for them. So, when Apple assigned this guy, they actually achieved the needed technology, benefited from expert knowledge, reduced project time, decreased the needed investment. Thereby, Apple saved a lot of resources, and they actually were able to produce this new device quicker and more faster than they would have been if they depended on internal resources. Another model that can be used to describe this process is the innovation space model, which mainly focusing on paradigm, product positioning and process. So, when Apple introduced a brand new product, they had a new technology, they had it positioned in new environments such as uh, connected directly into sound systems. They also created a brand new process in order to make this device, but also to change the customer's attitude towards MP3 players, which was mainly considered as slow and so on. So thereby, they had a holistic approach towards their innovation space, which eventually made them succeed.
The conceptual model for new product development can also be used to describe the iPod. The market was already existing. It was based upon a sub-platform system which made it incremental innovation and the required technology was quite high. The next step in the process is to locate the different factors and give them a score according to importance, according to management. So if we look at this example, new technology, level 5, optimized design, level 5, market research, level 4, production within the firm, level 3, which is indicates where the management should make the main effort. So, methods such as the open innovation, innovation space, conceptual model and state scale model are very great tools, but they all can also cause damage if not used correctly. The open innovation includes a risk of leakage, and the state scale model may have companies to kill out great ideas before actually reaching the required level. All in all, companies can actually benefit from using these tools, which Apple is a living example of. And also, the creation of the iPod has led to new developments such as the iPad and the iPhones and so on, which have expanded and saved the company back in the 2000s. Thereby, it can be concluded that the iPod was created as a result of customer need and a device to integrate iTunes. Priori is used to innovate and monitor, open innovation, innovation space, and state gate model. Other companies can actually benefit, as said before, from using this method. Thank you for listening.